I've been keeping a secret. Michelle here welcome back to my channel and I sat here because literally like 30 seconds ago the Sun was shining through and I'm like oh this would be a perfect place to film my video and now the Sun is going down so if it comes back up and goes down and the light you know goes in and out that's the reason why anyway yes as you see in the title I have been keeping a secret, you guys. So I did a thing outside of my immediate family and three of my friends, no one knew, but now you guys will. So in 2020, when the world turned upside down, any Hamilton fans out there? If so, y'all should get that reference. Anyway, when we were all stuck in the house, I had a lot of time to think and contemplate just different areas of my life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? No. Well, yeah. I was contemplating life as one does, and as I'm sure a lot of us did during that time because we were stuck in a house. Those of us which were not considered essential workers, which shout out to all the essential workers, especially doctors and nurses because y'all rock y'all held it down and i'm sure y'all are like girl just get to it okay give me a minute give me a minute i just gotta you know tell the story here from the beginning so you guys can understand what's going on so i was thinking about my life and i'm thinking if what i'm doing is something that i want to do for the rest of my life for those of you who don't know i am an rda which stands for registered dental assistant i moved up throughout my career different areas in dental um, when I got burnt out doing back office with the doctor, that's, you know, the one who sucks spit. <laughs> that's what I was doing, you know, and I made a good living off of it. And it's a it's a good paying job. I really enjoyed it. But anyway, when I got burnt out from that, I went to front office and did that, enjoyed it. I was even an office manager for a while. And I even was a dental assistant instructor, if you guys remember that. Well, I stayed in dental, like I said, and I moved around to different areas. And now I'm strictly dental bill billing. I am not in a dental office. I am, I mostly work from home and I do go in one day a week. But as I'm thinking about my career, and even though I enjoy what I'm doing, I'm thinking I am and have been for a while so sick and tired of corporate companies who, let's just be honest, um, they don't care about you honestly. They don't. Um, you are replaceable no matter what they say. And I'm getting to a point to where I'm not about that life anymore. I need to change. So something that I've been wanting to do since my kids were babies, but I didn't I let people talk me out of it. Which y'all, if you have a dream about something that you wanna do, go for it. Don't let people talk you out of it. Don't let people who are uneducated in what you want to do dictate whether or not you can do it. Not that they aren't not educated, but if they don't know the ins and out, don't listen to them. Do your own research, talk to people who actually know and go from there. And don't just talk to one person in that particular area, talk to several. So you can get several different opinions and thoughts about, you know, what you wanna do. Well, I went back to school, mm -hmm, I did. Your girl found an online accredited school and I finished. I studied and took my final exam and y'all, I passed my real estate exam. <laughs> it's the morning of my exam and I'm very nervous, you guys, very nervous. Um, I went to bed late studying, but I did get uh, like five and a half hours of sleep. I wanted to sleep a little bit more, but I wanted to cram as much studying that I could in and now I'm up early studying some more. And I'm also gonna eat a little bit. I made oatmeal. That way my stomach is not growling in the testing center because they won't let you step out to grab anything in your purse to eat. Or if they do, you're being watched like you're in prison. 
um, which I get, <sighs> just so people won't cheat. Y'all, I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous. So I've made it to the testing center. This is where I'm gonna go in to take my test. Um, it starts at 8.30, but they said to come early at 8 to register and all that. And of course, me being who I am, I'm here super early, but there's other people that are here now too. So y'all, I'm so nervous. Yes, I finally passed my real estate exam on the third try, y'all. Third time, third time was a charm. Yeah, they designed this test to confuse you and trip you up and have you focusing on the wrong things. A high percentage of people don't pass the first time, but of course some do. And if you're wondering why it took me so long, if I started in 2020, and now when you're seeing this, it's 2024, well, nerves. And I got a little discouraged. So after I finished the schooling, I did everything I needed to do to apply for my test. So I applied to take my test. Wait, I was so nervous because I wanted this so bad. So when you go in for testing, you show your ID, you have a printed letter with you, and you put everything in a locker. And they are watching you the whole time like hawks. I've seen them inspect people's glasses, put them on, hold them up, make sure they can't see any writing. They had people take off like if they had jackets or if they had long sleeves to show their arms to make sure both sides like this to make sure they did not have any writing on them. They wanted to make sure you wasn't cheating and they was not playing. So I was, I was already nervous and then I heard a lady said that that was her third or fourth time there and that made me even more nervous because I'm thinking, I don't want to be like her, but I, I, I ended up being like her. Plus, the exam room at the time, because the first time I took it was August, I didn't bring a jacket. It's 100 and whatever degrees outside. I didn't think I need one, but inside the exam room, it was freezing, you guys. So I'm already nervous, and then I get in there, and I immediately get cold. So... After you're done, you get your results right away, whether you pass or failed. And I failed that time with a 60%. You need to pass with a 70%. So I was so discouraged after that. I was a strong test taker in high school and in college. And when I study my stuff, I know I can achieve and get a high grade. That's just how I've always been. Taking tests doesn't make me nervous. I was, yes, I was nervous to take this test because I wanted it so bad, but I studied. So I knew I knew my stuff. But then I was like, dang girl, you dumb. But according to Google, and I will show you guys here, California is one of the hardest states to pass. I don't know why they make it so hard and then try to confuse you, which apparently they did. But whether you pass the first time or the third time has no bearing whether or not you will make a good realtor. What do you call a real estate agent who's passed the test the first time versus multiple times? A realtor, but they make it so confusing. No, but I really let it get to me and I was discouraged and I was discouraged and it took me at least about a year to apply for the test again. I don't know, I just felt that I don't know, maybe this isn't for me. But this time, I tried to make sure I was overprepared so that I knew what to expect from the first time. I studied the information inside and out from cover to cover, all the things that I had from school, all my tests, and yeah, I was ready. I made sure I brought a sweater. I went in with the mindset of, it's just a test, Michelle. At the end of the day, it's just a test. It's not like life or death. It's not end all be all and you can take it again. But they charge every time. It's $60 each time you have to apply for the test. So, yeah. So the second time I went in with that mindset and yes, I was nervous, but I felt even more prepared because I don't know, I just, on the list when they tell you that you failed, they tell you different areas like financing, um, say you got 50%, contracts, 90%. So they tell you exactly the areas where you're lower, where you need to study. So that's what I did. That's what I thought that was going to help. But y'all, I walked out and even though I felt so confident and I'm thinking, 
after I grab my purse, I'm going to open that paper and it's going to say pass. I don't care if it says 70 percent, as long as I pass. Y'all, it said 67. So at that point, the frustration was real. I'm not going to lie. I went through a little pity party, a little woe is me grieving period. And at that point, I was confused because I was like, I didn't study everything. Everything, everything that I had to study. And I'm praying to God, I'm like, where am I lacking? I didn't study all the things. I didn't, I know all the things. That lasted about a half a day. Then I got angry. And then I was like, well now me and this test, we about to fight. Cause now I, I, I gotta pass it. This test will not beat me. Well, then I went on TikTok and on YouTube and was trying to Google everything I can about passing the real estate exam in California. I even reached out to a few companies who I found out that they had an agent prep course and I'm thinking, well, maybe I need to do that. Maybe I need to have someone actually teaching me, telling me like that. I don't know, maybe that's how I learn better. So I was researching and then I came across, it's on YouTube and it's called, hold on you guys. Why did I forget? Prep agent with Joe. He is a real estate agent, and I don't know if he sell houses still, but now he teaches real estate how to pass, stuff like that. They have a bunch of videos on YouTube. There's also a paid version of it that you can get that's more in depth. And that's what I did because he comes highly recommended and a lot of people and a lot of comments were saying that they failed it multiple times. And then after they took the prep agent that they passed. So that's what I did. Because y'all, this time I was not playing, telling you, man, that test was about to fight. I'm just happy I don't ever have to take this test again, which means I cannot move out of California because we ain't doing this again. Because I heard Texas is just as hard, if not harder, than the California exam. So the third time I went in, I was relaxed because I think I already mentally prepared myself that I was going to fail that time also. So when I was taking the test, it was like, okay, if I don't know it, if I absolutely didn't know it, process of elimination, these two I know are absolutely wrong. It's out of these two, then I would click the right, check the right one. Um, but I didn't do that on most, most of them because I honestly wanted to give the right answer. I didn't want to just go in clicking everything, but I went in with that mindset and that, okay, I'm going to fail. So that's just how I went in. And I had already planned to retake the test. Cause like I said, when you get done, they, they give you this folded piece of paper with your results on it. And they tell you, don't open it till you get outside. Then you get your things out the locker and then you leave. Well, this time she said I was going to have to check my results online, usually in a few hours, but it can take up to three to five business days. This is the letter here, and I will read to you what it says. Although your examination has been completed and submitted for grading, our system is temporarily unable to finalize the releasing of these results. You may access your results online, gives the website, or at the above listed toll free number in three to five business days. At this point, my mind was spinning and I was confused because I was like, I know I've seen people post where they got these letters right afterwards and it said congratulations. And I'm like, is it something new for 2024? If you pass, you don't get your results right away. They just do it this way. I don't know. My mind was thinking all kinds of things. I'm an overthinker. So if you tell me something, I'm going to be thinking this one and everything in between. So now I'm even more stressed because I'm like, great. I'm going to have to wait three to five days before they tell me I failed, which means I can't even apply to take another test until the results are up. So I started checking when I got home, of course, it was going to be there right away. So the test is three hours. They give you three hours. The test was supposed to start at 830, but I got there at eight and you can start right away when you get there. So I got finished around 1045 ish. Um, it's 150 questions. And like I said, you have to have a 70% to pass. So I get home and about 245, I thought, mm, I'll check just one more time. It's a Friday, and if it still hasn't updated yet, then I will check back on Monday, and then every day afterwards until it updated. 
So when I checked, it said that I passed. I was in shock. I had to ask Cheyenne to look at it to make sure I wasn't looking at the wrong thing, making sure I read it correctly. Because not that I didn't think I could do it, but I was just shocked. But yes, I passed, y'all, I passed. So apparently when you pass, they don't tell you your score. It says it will not be released. That's disappointing. Cause I'd like to know if I made it by the skin of my teeth and if I only got a 70 or if I succeeded and got 80, 90, whatever. Probably not. I guess it really doesn't matter because when it comes down to it, I ain't gotta take this test again. But y'all, yes, I'm so excited with whatever with whatever future possibilities this opens up for me. I wish I did this sooner. And in my 20s, I wanted to pursue this field, but people talked me out of it, saying that it's a commission-based job, it takes a while to sell a house, you have little ones and bills to pay, you can't afford it, blah, 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 blah. Yes, all of that is true. But what I didn't factor in was I can do this on a part-time basis until I build up my business and my savings, then go for it full-time. Will it be extra work? Yes, but that's the steps and the sacrifice that I am willing to make to make this happen. So I did have a mentor throughout all this. She's about 10 years older than me. She went into real estate in her 20s as a side hustle while working a full-time job. She is now full-time in the real estate business and she is doing well. She is killing it. Her family wants for nothing. Let me tell you, um... I don't want to give too much of her business out because she will probably see this. Yes, she does quite well for herself. And I do realize that it will be a little bit harder for me to start because I do work a full-time job. Plus the company that I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with, I think, I still have to do some more research on it. The guy told me that a lot of their realtors start out working full-time jobs and have still sold houses. So it can be done and they also have training that will help me along the way. So I made sure I did my research as to where I took my online classes because if it's not accredited, then the state won't accept, you know, all that work that you did and probably, you know, I'm sure you paid money for it. So I did all my research to make sure it was a good, you know, accredited school. And then multiple people, and I've heard this for a while, told me that do not get discouraged as a new real estate agent. The reason why most new realtors fail and quit is they don't sell a house right away. When the truth is, unless you get lucky, which it can happen, and with my faith in God, I, you know, it can happen, it's possible. New realtors won't sell their first home until about six months after they are in the field. That's the average and I got a wealth of informa information that I plan to utilize and Lord willing help me through this transition. So probably soon, not right away, but slowly, you guys will begin to see real estate videos. I will definitely keep you all updated on my progress. My next step is I gotta get fingerprinted and then I have to send in my application to get my actual license. But yeah, y'all, I passed my real estate exam. I'm so excited. And I am taking the next steps to get started in this career. So yeah, if one thing I've learned from this whole experience is don't let people rain on your parade. Sometimes you gotta move in silence and keep your cards to your chest and just be hush-hush about things, you know? Because you never know what people can do or say to you to make you feel discouraged. Not that all the people who told me that I couldn't be a realtor as a single mom were hating on me, but I let their views and, like I said, uneducated opinions on how I should proceed hold me back. I didn't talk to the right people. I wish I could take it all back, but I can't change the past. So here I am now. Always pursue your dreams. Um, pursue those things that you want to do. And if you succeed, great. But if you fail, that's fine too. Keep going until you do succeed. Failure is part of succeeding. And I let the best get a hold of me. I could have already been working in the field, now, had I not
got discouraged after that first test. It literally took me a year and four months before I took the test again. Yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna get out of here. I have somewhere to go. What time is it? Okay. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, especially if you wanna see my progress. And I will see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.